right, so yesterday me and my wife came in. It was a Saturday night. We got here around five o'clock and we ended up printing the backs of this order on the automatic. So we finished that for the uh, Commonwealth Insurance. And afterwards, since the machine was warm and everything was just kind of loose and uh, working well, I decided to go ahead and take the entire Mac valves from underneath the press. And these are the ones that control the chop, the chop cylinders on each head. And I took the time to go ahead and rebuild one of them. It took me about 45 minutes because I was being cautious with all the gaskets going in the right place, making sure that everything was nice and clean and put back the way it's supposed to. So let me show you guys uh, just a quick comparison of the one that I just rebuilt and I cleaned it. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna go ahead and take them, take them out one at a time, clean them one at a time and then put them back together the way they go. So the way I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna grab some tape and just tape it here and number it. So I'm gonna go from, this is the back end. So I'm gonna go from one, two, three, all the way to, to 14. I think it's 14, all the pieces together. Uh, this is the only component that was brand new because the guys that installed my press replaced just this one. But we still have to clean everything that's inside of here. There was so much dirt and debris built in over the, over the years that nobody got in there to clean. And that's why we had so many air leaks. So Robert, thank you for the gaskets, the rebuild kits. I got them all. So we're gonna go ahead and take our time to rebuild it, put everything back together. This is the, uh, the cup seal. They came out of this first one that I rebuilt. So these are the old parts. And I'm gonna show you guys how to take it apart and put it back together. It's pretty repetitive. It's exactly the same thing going all the way through, but you have to make sure that you put it back together the way it was. So maybe it makes uh, a difference, maybe it doesn't, but that's just the way I'm gonna do it. And let's go ahead and get started with taking the first one apart and cleaning it because I don't want any oil um, any old oil or debris inside of these Mac valves what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean them with my screen opener and then after that we're gonna use this special lubricant so this one has already been cleaned rebuilt ready to go uh, we're gonna consider this part number one this will be part number two so we're just gonna tape it because it's ready to go and we need the room so we're just gonna tape that and put it away. This one's pretty much done. We're gonna clean this one, label it part number one. And I'm gonna go ahead and take all of this out and show you guys how to put it back together and how to clean the Mac valve. So like, remember, I said this was a new one. So we're not gonna mess with it. I'm just gonna go ahead and finish this one and then I'm gonna start with the third one so I can show you guys the entire process. All right, so what I was just showing you right now was the sides of the Mac valve. And on the sides, there are also gaskets. It has five in between each one where they sandwich. And those O-rings, they're in pretty good shape. So all I'm gonna do is clean them up. And that's what we're doing over here. We're just getting all the debris out of them. They were pretty filthy. So we're gonna let those rest for a little bit and then after we're done taking all of these apart, we're gonna go ahead and lubricate them. And let me show you guys the first three that we've done. So they're labeled. And then I'm just gonna stack them in order as I go. And then once I'm done, I'm gonna come back and then I'm gonna put all the O-rings where they're supposed to go. To make sure that everything goes back the way it's supposed to. All right, so when I take them out, you know, they slide through these bars and that's how they stack with each other. There are two screws, or actually four screws on the back. And that is gonna be where only one gasket goes inside. And then the spring, it, there's like a, a piston inside that's spring loaded. So that piston is, is spring loaded. 
So instead of taking the back part out first, I take out the front part. So on the front, there's two screws right here. And then on the top, there's another two screws that get this middle part out. So let's go ahead and take these out, bring the piston out, which we're gonna be replacing. And also the spring that's right in here. The only thing that's gonna get um, replaced, it's the gasket that goes in between this blue part and this metal part, the piston, the um, the spring, there's another gasket that is in between this black part and this metal part. And right inside of this blue part, there's like a little, okay, so this little tiny gasket goes over here on the end. And then we have the spring that goes right here. We have the piston that goes right in the middle. We have this gasket that goes right here in between these two. And then we have the cup seal that goes right in here. So that's really it. The main thing is to make sure that everything is nice and clean. We get all that debris and oil out of there. And then we simply lightly lubricate everything with our special lubricant. All right, so there's the first one that comes out. The gasket that goes right here was not part of the kit. So all we're doing is making sure that we wipe it, we take it out, and then we clean it to put it back inside. Let's go ahead and take out the second one. Okay, that second one was a little bit stuck not a bad thing so in here there's that little gear and right behind that gear is where the cup seal is gonna go so um, once I take that out I'm gonna show you the way that it's supposed to go inside because it is a cup seal and it works only certain going in a certain direction so you have to make sure that you put it back inside the way you take it out so that's gonna be another one that we're gonna fix um, this is that little one that I told you that goes right in between these two after that, we take out the gear, which is pretty filthy, as you can see. All this dirt, it's not supposed to be in there. But we are gonna replace it. We have the replacement part for it. And then also the spring. So after that, we're gonna take the back end apart. And that is where we are going to find that little tiny gasket. That we're replacing. So that's it. That's, that's pretty much taking the whole thing apart. And then after here, we're going to clean everything up with the uh, 480. Uh, Robert recommended that we use <clears throat> cotton swabs. So we're going to go ahead and use these to get inside. Make sure we get everything nice and cleaned. As you can see it's pretty filthy and then after that we're just going to replace the rings after we lub lightly lubricate them and that's pretty much it so let's go ahead and clean it up and then i'm going to show you guys how i'm lubricating and putting everything back together in order to clean this up really well what i like to do is i grab a corner of this rag and just get it nice and wet with the 480 and i simply just run it across the entire thing on all sides make sure it gets nice and wet so that does the job pretty well to get all the excess. I even like to clean the top. So you can see the difference right there. And then once I'm done cleaning everything <clears throat> from the exterior part, I bring in the cotton swab and then I simply run it right along the edge where all the seals are gonna be so that I can get all that debris out of there. <clears throat> and they kind of, tend to stay a little um, moist because I damp this really well and when I run it across it gets it nice and wet so this comes in and it finalizes that clean around that edge so that everything is nice and clean for that seal to come in I also run it inside of the entire uh, Mac valve on all components 
and inside of where the gear goes. Or everything is gonna get lubricated anyways. And it's not like we're doing a crazy clean <clears throat> inside of it, but we are on the edges because we don't want any debris inside and between the gaskets. All right, so once we're done cleaning everything up, and, and basically it goes the same way for everything. Uh, every single part gets cleaned the same way. So we can tell that a lot of that dirt is coming off and these are pretty oiled up. Uh, I'm gonna show you guys in a second that cup seal that's inside of here so that we can lubricate it and then replace it so it goes back inside nice and new. So check this out. So we're gonna pull this out with a blade. You can use whatever you like. And check this out right here. Right next to it, we have attached that seal that I was talking about. And that is very filthy. So just remember that the new cup seal has to go in the same exact way. So when you take it out, you have to put this one back in there, just like that. And we're gonna go ahead and clean. Oh my goodness, that is filthy inside. We're gonna go ahead and clean the entire components, just like I showed you guys with the 480. We're gonna clean this gear, or whatever this is called, and then we're gonna put that cup seal just the way you see this one. It has to be exactly the same way. All right, so it's time to lubricate the parts, and I'm gonna show you how I do it. I simply put a little dab in my finger. I rub it in my fingers, and then I just go through the gasket. So there's almost nothing in there, but it's lubricated. So we got that one lubricated. And then even with the same amount, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing with that cup seal all the way around. And let me show you guys the after. Big difference. So we still need to clean this part. Once we clean it, we're gonna put it in there and it's gonna be, it's gonna be much tighter than before. I was able to pull it out with that blade kind of easily, but now that we have a new seal, it's gonna be kind of hard to jam it in there, but you have to be careful. So you just kind of wiggle it in there. Once it's in there, you know, it's gonna be able to do what it's supposed to the correct way. And there's gonna hopefully be no air leaks. I lubricated that gear um, just like I lubricated everything else. And you guys can see the difference already, how much cleaner this is. So when you put this in there, you just have to be, it doesn't matter, it's exactly the same thing. So this is, doesn't matter how you look at it, it goes in either way. So when you put it in there, you just have to snug it in carefully. That's it. And then we're gonna bring in that back part with that tiny gasket so we can screw it in. Um, so let me show you guys. So here is what that spring goes. The spring goes on the back side. So with that spring, you can push, you can push the gear at the back side. That way you're not having trouble whenever you're connecting ¿Dónde está la otra parte? Esta. Es, okay, so, you know, once you put your gasket in there, you want to push the gear to the other side because you're going to have your, your spring in there and you don't want that spring fighting. So, you want to know that you're putting it the right way. The right way, it has to read Mac like this to where the air hoses connect. You know, put the gasket lubricated, jam it in there, screw it. And then we're going to continue with this side once we're done with that. Now we finally cleaned that middle part. And we're going to put in that gear going in like this. Right. And right in between this one. Right in between this one. We're going to put this gasket. And it's. You know, it's pretty simple to know which way it goes because we have that square up here and you don't want to block that airway <clears throat> by putting it like this. <clears throat> so we're simply going to put it like that 
<clears throat> and right here we have no choice but to fight that spring so we're going to go ahead and press it in as we screw it and then we're going to get the next part put together all right you guys that's it that's pretty much how you put it back together um we do have an extra gasket i really don't know where it would go and honestly i i'm not putting it in because it didn't come out of here this is that old one <clears throat> so once you figure out how to get this one in there that's uh pretty much fighting the spring uh, you put the last one you screw it in make sure everything is nice and nice and clean nice and snug everything is lubricated you don't want to over tighten these and that's it continue and repeat the same step about 12 times or it depends on how many hits you have so there we go now we're going to go ahead and label it and then we're going to go put it with the rest so we have a lot of homework I hope this is helpful. Uh, let me know if you guys have any other way or methods of doing this. Robert, I know you said you were going to make a video and explain how to do it. I hope this is the correct way. Once we put it back together, if we don't have any air leaks, we're going to find out. And if we do, I'm probably going to have to replace the seals that are in between each valve that sandwich them together. I doubt it that that's going to be why. But um, if I do hear any air leaks, that's going to be the only reason why it would leak. I have them all cleaned up and labeled and my father-in-law left but my dad's here so he can help me hold them you know on their side so here we have the gaskets the ones that get sandwiched in between each valve so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come over here and grab the next one that goes in and then sandwich just, mm -hmm basically just slide it in place that way the gaskets uh, sit where they're supposed to and then we're going to grab the next five from that bunch put them in here and then slide them all the way through screw those together so everything is held in place then after that, we're gonna go and put it back on the press so we can fire it up and see if we have any leaks. So let's go ahead and put these together, put the hoses right back where they're supposed to go and fire it up to finish the job. So the last tip that I'm gonna give you guys is to make, this is how you make sure that there's absolutely no air leak in between the valves. We had an issue with one of the valves earlier because it was damaged. So we replaced that valve with one that we had extra and what we did is we turned off the lights in the room and then we ran the flashlight up against the back side of the valve all the way around back and forth a couple of times and if you cannot see any light coming through at all and i'm talking about this not this one right here this one all the way through with the lights off you'll have a better visual of what's going on and that way you'll be absolutely 100 percent sure that there's no air leaks whatsoever so the last thing that I'm gonna tell you guys is when you're tightening this up, you have to make sure you have a flat surface so that they're all sitting nice and flat. And um, it's better if you use one of these Allen wrenches, if you guys have one. And that's it. We're gonna connect all the air hoses. We're gonna power it up and we're gonna call it a day. Hopefully there's no air leaks. I'm gonna fire it up and I'll let you guys know if it leaked or not. All right, you guys, I'm gonna say this is a success right here. Everything is looking fine. That, that little air leak that you guys hear is coming from this elbow. So this elbow has a little leak. And after that, we should be pretty much air leak free from down here. All right, hope you guys learned something good today. I sure did.